All right, cool. So um, I didn't draw this. <laughs> Whoever said nice pose. So um, I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna mess up this name probably. Komome Shirahama probably messed that up. Yeah. All right, are we recording? We're recording. This will probably end up on YouTube, so I'll do a little intro. And we have we have multi-angle shots today. <laughs> All right. Oh, there we go. So, <laughs> hello there. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I'm a comic book colorist, and you probably know that. And welcome to my YouTube channel live stream today so this is what we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna leave this up uh, like this most of the time so you guys can see all of the layers and all that stuff uh, you'll be able to see my hand on the screen a little bit at least if you want to see that I had someone ask about that and so if I do any gestures or things like that I can can show you and yeah so like I said this uh, this was drawn by and I'm Again, I'm going to mess up his name, uh, Kamome Shirahama, maybe. <laughs> Sorry for those of you that know how to pronounce that. All right, I'll try to keep one eye on the chat as well. If I miss things for a while, I'm sorry. I can't draw and look at that at the same time, but I'll try to keep an eye on that. And, um, yeah. Let's get started. Let me turn my phone off. I'm going to probably have to uh, step out for a little bit in a second because my wife needs some help moving something. So we'll see how that goes. So hello to Camila, Nimzo, Tim, Mike, Opinion, <laughs> Bracken, Lafayette. Those are all the people in the chat right now. Yeah, somebody somebody typed a name in there. Excellent, excellent artist. Uh, this was commissioned for um, Heather Antos at Marvel, and uh, I asked her if she would mind if I colored it, and she said, sure. So, um, you're using iPad Pro with Procreate. Would you say your technique is the same as it would be in Clip Studio? I have spent a total of about four minutes with Clip Studio in my life. <laughs> so, um, I have no idea. I'm sure it's similar. All these things are really, really similar to each other. So, um, I'm just gonna I just all I've done is import this so far. So I haven't set up anything. We're gonna set the inks to multiply, and let's rename this inks, and we're gonna drag this underneath, and that's going to be flats. And I honestly haven't used this. I've been uh, on my computer for a, a week or two, so I'm probably a little rusty on this, but we'll see how it goes. So I actually have a flatting brush, I'm calling it anyway, um, because you can anti-aliases, and Procreate's Lasso doesn't do that right now. So, let's see doesn't really matter what color this is right now. Uh, let's see. I don't think a little bit lighter. Yep, that'll work. So I'm still sort of um, uh, perfecting my technique, probably. Um, and... I don't know. I might do the lasso because this is kind of a mess anyway. These inks aren't super sharp. It's probably not going to make that much difference. But I'll try it with a brush. I don't think I've ever actually tried this yet. So um, basically, it's going to trace the outline first, and we'll go from there. I usually don't flat myself. Because I don't like it. <laughs> um, I really, really don't like it. 
but this was just for fun uh, and it's not a deadline or anything so and it'll give me a chance to practice with with the tools and I'm not 100% sold this is the best way to do this but I don't know, there's a lot of messiness in the inks. I'm just going to do this. Let's undo all of this. Nope, not that. <laughs> Let's try lasso. Yep, that'll work. Welcome to everyone that's just popping in. So normally I wouldn't um, really use the lasso for this, but normally I wouldn't be doing this at all. <laughs> but this is kind of a low res image anyway, so it's not really gonna make that much difference. And I'm still pretty new to all of these tools, so there's. I just want to play around with it. And the cool thing is, if you want to make a straight line, you don't even have to change tools. You just click where you want it to go, and you can skip sections. You can draw like this, and then like jump ahead and click over here, and it makes a straight line, which is actually better than Photoshop handles that to me. Uh, it also, if I lift my pen, the line doesn't disappear, which Photoshop does. So that's kind of interesting. Don't have to be quite as careful. So right now I'm just going to select all of it and then we'll break it up into smaller parts. How can it be worked like a sheet of paper? So if you look up at the top right, you can see my hand. So it Procreate does this, like it works just like paper does. And so I love it. I love that part of it. <laughs> Photoshop um, will handle um, rotation like that, but it doesn't, I found that the Wacom tablets get really, really picky when you're doing fingers and stylus at the same time. So I don't really, I don't use it a lot, or I don't even have it anymore, but even when I did, like on my Intuos, I think it su might support touch, but it's like you have to pull the, the pen so far away from the screen so that the touch part would work. It kind of didn't work that well, so. I mean, I don't know. I feel like uh, this is as close to drawing on paper as you can possibly get on anything. Um, so, yeah, and there was a couple of places that I messed this up. There. I think this is close enough. But, um, yeah, let's do. There we go, something like that. 
Um, but I've noticed on the Apple, on the iPad with Apple Pencil, you can switch back and forth without worrying about it at all, and it works pretty well. Um, I actually need some reference. Gwenpool. This is uh, an original, you know, design jacket. Like, it's not like her usual outfit or anything, but I at least want to get the color scheme right. <laughs> uh, yeah, what software is this? This is Procreate. Uh, is that an iPad 2? Um, don't think so. Um, I don't know what they call iPad 2 now. Uh, this is an iPad Pro, and it's a 12.9 inch? Something like that. So, yeah. Would you recommend Procreate or Metabang? I've never used Metabang. I have no idea. Uh, for those of you that, that don't follow my channel or that, that you're new to the channel, uh, I have been using Photoshop exclusively for the last 14 years or something until I bought an iPad Pro at the recommendation of um, colorist John Rock, if you guys are familiar with him. And um, I have not really looked back. I mean, I still use Photoshop a good bit, but when I'm away from my desk... I really like the iPad, and I'm actually starting to use it more and more. Um, but uh, but for now, I'm kind of um, I'm on like a lot of I'm on several projects that are all close to wrapping up, and I don't really want to completely switch my workflow. Um, so once um, once the um, once I wrap up a lot of these other things that I'm doing, then um, I will probably like my next project will probably be completely on the iPad and I am so rusty flatting right now that I can't even remember let's see um So yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about any iPad apps <laughs> except for Procreate. Um, Clip Studio came out um, this week, at some point, and um, a thousand people told me about it, <laughs> which I appreciate. It felt like a thousand people. Um, and I told my friend John about that also because he's the only other guy that I know that I know personally coloring on an iPad and um, he immediately said that um, he hasn't used anything else since <laughs> so he's he already liked clip studio I will probably like it too but for this stream I don't I didn't want to totally try to reinvent the wheel and and make sure you guys get something out of this so Yes, flatting takes longer than the colors. Me too, which is why I don't do it very often. And let's see here. I'm trying to use as many existing edges as I possibly can so that I don't have to redraw these, retrace these things over and over. Yeah, this is Alias. It doesn't really look great, but it'll work for our purposes today. 
Yeah, Brian in the chat mentioned and Clip Studio is awesome. It is like Photoshop. Procreate is more fun. Um, yeah, like Procreate, you just forget that you're even on a tablet, or I do. It just feels so much like paper. You don't really have to think about it. Um, I, the first One of the first nights I was doing just some sketching with it, and um, like I used the eraser and then like... Whew, like blue, like I was wiping the eraser marks off the page and I felt like an idiot, but I was like, but that I was so lost in what I was doing that I didn't realize that I forgot that I was on paper. I know that that sounds like a commercial for Procreate, but I assure you that's not, they're not paying me to say that. Someone should make that, that idea a commercial and take my idea and run with it. Sorry, I keep looking at, uh, reference over here I don't know if these are I don't think these are like regular part of her costume glasses so I'm just going to do this this color which is close to how it is on her mask and we'll see Oh, I should totally, if you two finger swipe, no, if you one finger swipe to the right, I think, nope, what is it, no, they changed it, if you click on a layer and hit alpha lock, it won't let you color off outside of that layer, so, it locks all, it's basically the equivalent of lock transparent pixels in Photoshop, so, yeah. Let's see, catching up on the chat here. Uh, this is Gwenpool, not from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> uh, how do you profit? They take hours. Well, you know, I mean, people get pretty fast flatting, so. How can we support your channel? Uh... Well, you can, I sell coloring courses. That's the best way, probably. I also have a Patreon. Um, but if you want to support it and, you know, learn something at the same time and get, some, get something back out of it, um, the course is probably the best way. Uh, Patreon, uh, it's a, the cheap way to support me. And I've got a bunch of PSD files up there and random stuff. But, uh, but yeah, if I have to flatten myself, it takes like three times longer than it would if I don't, so. So I just don't very much. I would normally be like a lot more careful if I was flatting this, but I am... Just trying to get as much as I can done without um, without being here all night long. <laughs> two finger, yeah, it is two fingers to the right. Thank you, whoever said that. All right, so her eyes are pink. 
and her mask is white. That's what we're doing here, so. And let's see. We're getting there, we're getting there. So, so white, so pink jacket, white trim. Is that what you know what we're going to do? I think that's what we're going to do. I don't know. I've tried Twitch a couple of times. I just, I get a lot more people show up from YouTube. So that's where most of my audience is anyway. So, I mean, Twitch is nothing against Twitch, but, but yeah, I just, I haven't had, I don't have a, a you know, a big following or anything here. I don't know if this is supposed to be her or, or Deadpool on this ring, but we're going to make it Deadpool. I don't know. I'm not not selling the hat. Not my hat. Not my design. So our colors are really just pink, white, and gray. Well, she's got a simple design color-wise, so that should go pretty quick. We're almost done with the boring part. <laughs> Bear with me. The, uh, yeah, the last cover I had to flat, and I, I think I talked about this in the last stream, it was the, um, uh, what was it? It was Postal 25, I think. And it's the first cover that I've, I mean, it's the first page that I've had to, like, do myself in a long time. And it took three hours total, flats and everything else. And the, the rendering part started, <laughs> like, as I recorded it, like an hour and 45 minutes into it. So it took an hour and 45 minutes to flat it, an hour and 15 to... Um, to render the whole thing. So, if you wonder why pro colorists use flatters, that is why. Because I can get three times the amount of work done <laughs> in in very little time. I don't think I like the fact that that skull is the same color as the stripes are right there. 
So let's see. Better. Let's see. You should get Streamlabs or Super Chat so we can donate money to you directly while you're streaming. <laughs> okay. I have never thought about that, but maybe I will. Um, if you don't want to wait on that to happen, because I probably won't have time to do that anytime soon, go to coloringcomics.com. There's a link at the top, and you can check out my course there. Or Patreon slash KMR, either one. Do you prefer to use the iPad Pro and Procreate or Photoshop? Um, it's just two totally different things. Um, I find Procreate more enjoyable to use. And I want to do more with it and the iPad and less with Photoshop. That's where I would like to end up. And I'm not there yet, only because I just haven't had a lot of time to really dedicate to learning new tools. It's hard to do on a deadline. So, um, yeah, this is an Apple Pencil. It's the only one that I can recommend with the iPad, but I haven't used anything else, so I don't know. Almost done flatting. Are there any color combos you like to avoid? Um, just colors that don't look good together. <laughs> like anytime, you know, colors, a lot of colors clash with each other, especially if they have, have too much saturation in them. So I try to avoid that. Um, But I mean, any just about any two colors can work together if you're um, if uh, if you just really just watch your saturation levels for the most part. I I look at saturation as kind of like um, kind of like a scale, at least with like simple combos. Um, So if you've got like a super, you know, you want to do a complementary color scheme, and you've got like a really saturated red, then like desaturate the green like a lot. And usually it it's still going to look like green. And yeah. Have you ever tried changing the background color to a color like green to see where the character's colors are easier? Uh, usually I would. Um, I want to keep this on a white background though, I think. So I don't know. You can always, you can go into, there's a background color that you can change in Procreate automatically. Um, I don't know, that yellow is kind of cool too. Like, I want it to be really bright and kind of gaudy. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, 
All right, so we've got flat, so I'm just gonna duplicate that. And we're gonna call this colors. And I'm also gonna lock these flats so that I don't unintentionally screw those up. And so as far as lighting, I mean, other than kind of generally coming from the top and the right. So like, and this is what I'm looking at here. So these shadows under here, let me get something you guys can see really bright red there so um, so like these shadows under here along this side of the arm this sides in shadow the underside of this is in shadow all of this is obviously shadow so like you know the lights kind of doing this number something like that And there are so many ways to do this in Procreate. Um, so what I'm going to do, just to play around with something different, um, I'm going to make a new layer. And let's just, this color doesn't really matter at this stage. And I'm going to set that to multiply. And you can play around with hue and saturation and all that stuff in a minute. We'll see. Alright, so I don't know if you guys are familiar working on mask, but that's what we're going to be doing today. So basically, anywhere I paint it's going to be that shadow color, as long as I'm painting with full white. And if I paint with black, then it's going to go away. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lay this color up here and then I'm going to play around with the color until it gets where I want it. I think I want it to be kind of blue and purpley to offset the greens kind of cool though. Something about like that. You get like a neat blue color on the skin and purple on all that, and yeah, I think that'll work. Whoops, not that. You gotta be on the mask for this to work. <laughs> Alright, so I'm painting all of this out. <laughs> Walking the dog says, I've been waiting for this video since the moment you mentioned you bought an iPad Pro. Yeah, I'm going to be doing some more videos, some actual tutorials and stuff on this, but for now, um, we're going to stick with this. So, I'm just going to select, and you can actually do this a couple ways too, but I'm going to select all of the colors. And you can do that just by clicking the layer and hit select. And then I'm going to go get a brush. And let's make sure I'm the right one. There we go. I want something kind of brushy, not like that square flat markers. Interesting. It's got a nice texture to it. Might stick with that for a bit. So basically, I can color anywhere I want within this, but I can't color outside of it. See what I see? What it, how it's happening here? So the selection is kind of taking care of that part. And the lighting is where I say it was it's coming from the right. So we're gonna think about all of this stuff being in shadow. And I'm not even really bothering with, you know, using the flats much right now. I'm just going to, that's one of the things that I've noticed um, 
working on on the iPad is the pencil is so much more precise than my Wacom tablet has ever been so um, I find myself not always using flats like if I don't if I can stay in the lines without them then it saves me some time so So this whole side, you know, is going to be in shadow. So every stroke that I'm making, I'm thinking about where that light's going to hit. Not just, because I think a lot of, I see a lot of portfolios and I see a lot of beginner colorists just think, all right, I'm going to right side of every single one of these strokes or whatever, or left side in this case. But you're going to get more light on this side than you are on this side. You know? So even within a something like a piece of hair like that, or you know, you're going to have places where, um, you know, it's... It's more in shadow than others and that kind of stuff. So you should, like, you should always be thinking in 3D all the time, which takes a lot of practice, honestly. But you got to start somewhere. Another cool thing about working with this method is I can always go back and tweak that shadow color if I want, you know, so. Don't forget her neck. Is that her neck? <laughs> it looks like it is her neck. I would have eventually figured that out. <laughs> Maybe. get on the right layer there we go and someone's gonna ask this is the flat marker it's just default brush it doesn't really matter much but if you're curious what is her what is your favorite genre of book to work on I don't know like I don't really I guess I haven't really thought about that um I just happen to work on a lot of horror type books, <laughs> um, so um, I, I don't, it wasn't like intentional. Like I want to work on horror books and scary books, but um, that's kind of what ended up uh, happening here. So I just um, so, but they're they're fun. I mean, I like working on those. Um, I don't dislike working on them. It's just it wasn't my original intention to just be on a lot of 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 those sort of books. Didn't do her shoelaces. Need to fix that. Under the right. 
right layer. Uh, yeah, it's a layer mask. Um, it's all one one layer. That's the that's the mask itself. You can turn it off and on there, and then the color is there. So if I want to like go in and change the base color, I can slide this around and get different effects out of it. But. saturated that a little bit all right let's see I did something wrong right here. Oh, I see what I did. Bear with me a second. Yeah, screwed up my base colors. <laughs> help with my selections dot there we go alrighty since the shades are cool colors will be highlights will be warmer uh yeah probably so um Something like that. How many gigs is your iPad Pro? Um, I don't remember. 512? Get the right app. Oh, I do it constantly. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked about... Um, the ability to manipulate the canvas blows your mind. Yeah, I mean, and the crazy thing is, like, it doesn't stutter at all. Like, I mean, you can do as fast or as much as you want, and it's, um, it just works. I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know how it does it, but it does, so. All right, so... This drawing is so good to begin with that, like, I feel like I could just stop and it would be awesome. Because <laughs> it was awesome before I started.
something like that. All right. Um, my only gripe with the way masks work right now in Photoshop is, I mean, in Procreate, is that you can't, like in, in Photoshop, if I wanted to switch to black, to paint with black, I could just pick any area outside of where I've chosen and it would be black but in this case I actually have to click somewhere black to get black so that I can paint away with it which is kind of kind of weird to me but that's what it is or that's the way that it is anyway Um, so I like to do, like, if I'm going to do, like, blush-type stuff on noses, I tend to get a, uh, like, an overlay brush and, or an overlay layer, and then just get, like, a, something soft and small, and do that. I usually get it under the nose and um, ears if you could see them, which he doesn't really have ears that we can see. It's very subtle, but it makes the skin look better. And also in places where like the shadow switches from the shadow to the skin. Like I said, it's pretty subtle, but it looks good when it's done. And also, because you've got all this pink bouncing around the skin, like the shadows would be pretty saturated and pretty red in those places. And this is just a soft brush, nothing fancy. Do you ever worry about zooming in too far? Um, no, I don't really zoom in a lot. <laughs> I might be doing it more now just because I'm, I like playing around with Procreate, but um, Uh, I think that's the reason for the layer limit. Uh, yeah, the layer limits are really high, though. Like, this is... So, yeah, 56 of the layers are the number of layers. So, we're not going to get there anytime soon. All right, so... This one mentioned her hair. It is a different color. I just haven't got to that point yet. Um, her hair is more yellow than it is here, and it has pink, pink to orange highlights. Maybe that's just the gradient from pink to yellow. Um, yeah, I was going to be, I mean, I was, this is the darkest color it was going to be, so I was going to be doing a bunch of painting anyway. So let's see, let's, I'm just going to do this on the layer. I'm not going to worry about getting a special mode or anything. I just, sometimes if you know what you want, you just do it. And in this case, I want yellow. As I'm getting more and more saturated, I'm shifting this a little bit more toward yellow. And I'm also bumping up the opacity of this brush now. Because I want more of want really want it to, more of the color to come come down in there.
yeah, ombre. That's that, that, that's the that's the term, right? So let's fix let's fix her hair. That's one thing I like about Clip Studio that I have found. You can just select everything at one time. It's one color, even if the pixels aren't touching each other. So, um... I'm going to try staying on this overlay layer and see what this looks like. And I'm just going to get a soft brush. It's not that red, is it? It's pretty much pink. Overlay might not be best for this. Let's just put this in normal mode and we'll come back to that. Coming out a little too orange. There we go. That's an overlay mode. And you can further control your tools with your left hand. Freaking amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, I. Um, you can change the size of the brush over here and you can also change the opacity at the bottom and you can color pick with that little symbol in the middle which is pretty handy and there's an undo over here too but um, and redo but I you can also two finger tap so like if I mess up I can just tap on the screen with two fingers and it'll go right away I think that's faster Um, another thing that I've been playing around with is just using um, the pencil to do highlights. Like, I just love the pencil in here. So, um, you can get something like, like Add. I don't know if Photoshop has Add. It might call it something different. But it makes things really, really bright and blown out, and it's overkill. So, we'll, we'll probably end up turning the opacity down. But uh, it's still um, it's still fun to goof around with. Um, and let's see, like if I switch to the pencil, and we'll just make some sketchy stuff on this. And this is the uh, this is the Procreate pencil tool. Is what this is. And again, you don't want to overdo it in this mode because it gets really, really intense. So I'm just barely, barely touching the screen here. Unless I do want it really bright, like on the nose there. And I'm going to turn the opacity on this down some. Because even like at 50%, it's still significantly brighter than the, uh, than the rest.
And I'm, I'm picturing this as like one of those kind of rain jackets that's kind of slick. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I expect there to be like some, some highlights on this that are kind of sharp. Like right there. When you do, those are called specular highlights. And they, they really, they make things look, you know, wet. Um, when you add a little bright spot like that, it's kind of a way of showing like how reflective it is. And if you gather it in little spots like that, then it kind of looks like, you know, it's catching the reflection of whatever the light source is behind her. And I'm not really doing quite as much of that on her skin, obviously. Like, I don't want to, like, totally go crazy with it. It's not everywhere. More detail around the face, obviously. Yeah, this texture, it, it's got a really cool um, feel to it. And if I, if I blow this up, you guys can kind of see. It's got, it's got just enough to make it interesting to me. <laughs> All right, so and and for those of you, like I had a lot of people, I don't know if any of you guys are listening now, but I had, I had a lot of people telling me that I was crazy for even thinking about coloring on an iPad. But, um, you know, think about how many times you guys have seen me go grab my flats or go grab a selection. You know what I mean? Like, that's the part that's hard to, like, quantify, like, time-wise, but it adds up. Like, jumping back to the flats and then going back to the thing and making you know, and that stuff adds up, like, over the course of a piece, and, um, so that's why it's, like, that's why it's been so impressive to me, is I, I like, I'm, I can't be this accurate with my Intuos, but even when I had my, um, my Wacom Studio Pro, like, I just, I couldn't do this, this smoothly and expect it to look like I wanted it to without even worrying about selecting flats or any of that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's a game changer to me. <laughs> Total game changer. All right, so... Let's just, this is Gwenpool, so let's just totally go over the top here with some highlights. Or just some, some like glares is what I'm thinking about. Um, this is a soft brush. It is, um, I'm going to try overlay first. And then you would see that on the um, on the jacket in places.
I feel like this is getting pretty close. Um, I'm going to tone this down a little bit on her knees. This looked like it stood out too much to me. Um, I'm debating about if I want to do anything with the background or leave it like it is. I kind of like the way that it is. I might do a shadow on the ground. I'm also thinking about doing like a, a big selection or a big like fade from the bottom maybe. So I'm just going to, this is on top of all the existing colors, big soft brush. And let me get a color I can see better. I'm going to change this color afterwards so I don't freak out. <laughs> All right, and let's see. works okay. I don't know if it needs it though. Whoops, let me get off the hidden layer. There, I basically just got rid of it except for right around her feet. They're a little bit darker than the jacket, but not much. Yeah, uh, Procreate has reference layers too. I just haven't really, I haven't had a need to use them too much. You can add textures the same as well. Yeah, you can you can do all that stuff. Um, let's see. I kind of want to do because why not? This is not taking that long. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about like a like another cool bounce light on the left. And let's see. I'm gonna put this in add mode again and then probably tone it down a lot. Nope, don't like that mode. I want it to be more blue than white. Hard light looks like it might work. Again, this is like super, super subtle. Um, like really subtle just enough to like make it a little bit more interesting but barely <laughs> Now I'm not going to carry this over into the bright parts because you know those those parts are going to they have the uh, they have the bright parts so they're not going to over they're not going to overpower the main light source. So all, all of this little blue stuff is going to be in the shadows, basically. And only in the places that light would reach from that side. I 
and this stuff is barely noticeable, but when it's, but, it, but it, you notice it, well, I'll turn this off and on when we're done and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I'm basically just thinking in reverse of what I did before. I've got, you know, lights coming from the other, other angle. And in places where you've got like um, two colors like folding against each other, like where it's the same color, it tends to get more saturated. So I might play around with that on the jacket in some places in a second. Uh, do brushes have blending modes or just the layers? Actually, the last update that just came out uh, added modes to brushes. So like if you go to a brush and go to general, there's a blend mode setting, which is awesome. I actually haven't set all this up yet, but eventually I would I would have like, you know, a highlight pencil or a shadow pencil or whatever. I can set all that stuff up and not have to think about it anymore. Uh, I just haven't had time to, like I said, I really haven't played around with it that much. So, all right. So I'm gonna color pick like kind of the base color. I want to add some saturation. And with just a soft brush, and I'm going to do this on a separate layer so I can adjust it. So where the folds meet each other, basically. And this is a little too saturated and a little too bright, but I can tone that down. So especially in here where you know, you would get the, the the arm up against the the hanging part of the jacket. So yeah, it's a little too saturated. So I'm just going to go into take some of the saturation out, and I could even play with the color a little bit. I wanted to. It's a very, very subtle thing, but I like it better. Yeah, layers and brushes can have modes. So on any layer, all these little letters, 0, M, N, all this stuff next to them, uh, these are uh, the layer modes. So like if I change, let's zoom up on this, like if I change that from normal to multiply, you see it get darker. That's all the different. There's all the darken modes, there's all the lighten modes. Overlay, hard light, I use those a lot. I don't, difference and exclusion, I really hadn't found a way to use these. Somebody else can tell me the best way to do that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm just going to leave this in normal mode. And... Let's see. So let's do this shadow on the ground.
So I've just inverse the selection of the whole character. I'm going to go back to my shadows layer. And I don't use it a ton, but there is a smudge tool. And it can use any brush, which is awesome. There's actually a pretty cool trick. So like, and this is, I'll show you guys over here. So if I get like a, a pencil tool, and if I'm just doing a sketch, and, and this is the, you know, the, the tool that I'm using is the pencil. If I want to erase, now I could use like a regular eraser, you know, using a soft edge or something, but it sort of starts to look digital, you know, when you've got these like fades and things going on in your, in your uh, uh, eraser. So when you have your brush selected, like this is what I call the fat pencil, which I borrowed from, what is his name? He's on YouTube and he does Procreate tutorials. Austin Bachelor, is that his name? Yes, I got it right. Austin Bachelor. Uh, this is his pen, and all it is is like an adjusted, slightly adjusted version of the default pen. And um, anyway, if you hold down, say, the eraser, it will become that same brush, but as an eraser. Or the same thing works with a smudge tool. So like when I erase, I'm erasing with the same texture that is in my sketch. So that really makes a lot of the uh, digital stuff look less digital. Um, is it Mike Henry? Maybe it's Mike Henry. I've watched both of those guys a lot. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Mike, if he ever watches this video. Yeah, Mike Henry is the guy you want to... All he did was like tweak one of the size limits slightly, and he calls it Fat Pencil, and so yeah, it's his, his pencil. Um... Someone wants to see the background in white to see what it looks like. I'm going so, there it is. I like the yellow better. <laughs> like I said, I've already done the entire image with yellow as part of it, so if I switch it at this point, I probably usually don't like it. Um, let's see, I want to... I want to make this glow. Right here. Whoops, not that color. All right, I think I'm pretty close to wrapping this up. I'm just getting the finishing touches here. More contrast in the eyes, basically.
Yeah, I think the white would get lost if the background was white, so. All right, so. <laughs> Thank you. Someone said it looks sick. Thank you. I know, right? Three cameras, so much stuff going on. So fancy. We have this, which no one wants to see. And we have this, which is... It's really only good for seeing my hand, seeing what I'm doing. There's a little bit of a delay. Slight delay. Anyway, uh, I had to go get a capture card for my computer to, to accept uh, the HDMI from the camera, but... Um, when I start doing like actual tutorials, I'll probably have the camera set up better so you guys can see this better. But anyway. So anyway, any uh, before I wrap this up, you guys have any questions? Last call. So I'm impressed with the screen capture stuff. This actually works pretty well. Um, this is actually my desktop computer that I'm capturing this on. And it's this app that it looks like... It doesn't look fancy. <laughs> Apple Soft A PowerSoft Phone Manager. It has the worst name. <laughs> A Apple Soft Phone Manager. That is what I'm capturing my iPad with. Someone will ask that eventually. How did I make the glow? Which one? Hello to Chile. Uh, how are the brushes in Procreate? I think they're awesome. Um, I, uh, I've played around with, I actually haven't played around with that many of them, but there are a lot of brushes built into this app. I mean, this is just the sketching section. <laughs> okay. You've got artistic, and there's lots of brushes in there. Inking brushes. This inker that I found, I don't know what website it was, but they called it the Watterson, uh, named it after, like, Bill Watterson of, of uh, Calvin and Hobbes fame. I've got I've got smoothing turned on on this too, but boy, this thing is just silky, silky smooth. Like it's got so much range, it's crazy. Um, like that's one stroke without ever changing the size. You can get like these, you know, super thin. Like if you hold your pen up more vertically, you know, the lines get really thin, and then as you lay it down sideways, they get thicker. So it's just like a and like I said, there's a little bit of a smoothing on this particular brush, which is why you see it kind of sliding around a bit, because I'm terrible. But, but for inking, like, oh, I love it. Um, tons of inking brushes, though. Uh, calligraphy, I don't know anything about calligraphy, but if you're into that. Um, painting, I don't know. There's a lot of painting brushes in here. Um... This one's wet. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but there we go. Airbrushes, charcoal. I thought about using this today, but I decided against it. Uh, and then there's all sorts of just textures, like things like grids and um, dots. And I mean, there's weird stuff in here. I hadn't even looked at all of these. Wood grain. Interesting. Um, abstract. These are all default. I didn't buy any of this stuff. Like water on a surface of something, you know, if it was white, it probably looked better. Like under a pool or something. Totally stealing that sometimes. Snow. Snowing. This is too much fun, sorry. Uh, oh, there's a great clouds brush too. 
This is Gwenpool in a fog. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Um, let's see. Very cool. Now you have me wanting an iPad Pro. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, especially now that Clip Studio has shown up on here, like, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to have to use Photoshop for anymore. So, um... There's a tiny space between her face and her glasses that, on the left, that I think is hair. I think you're right. You're talking about right. Whoops. <laughs> I'm on a crazy brush. Hold on. Right here that we're talking about. I think that was the spot. <laughs> Let's see. I heard Photoshop has a built-in stabilizer. I have no idea. I haven't. I haven't. They didn't do a good job of advertising it. If they did, <laughs> I haven't heard about it. Um. But yeah, where were we? Brushes. Oh, there's some like. I don't really use this stuff that much, but there's like hair brushes, like literally the paint hair stubble which you can't really see but if you're drawing wolverine man like you need this crap right here right that's so nasty she has hair on her, <laughs> on her jacket now um noise old skin like look at that it's like a dinosaur or something rough skin be good for leather and stuff zombie skin it just looks nasty. Ooh, that looks awesome, though. Yeah, there's so much crap in here, y'all. Oh, they, they have uh, they have flares. They have, like, uh, not that I use lens flares, but you can definitely, um, you can definitely make them. I think they're a terrible idea most of the time, but... Yeah. Don't do flares. <laughs> There's also uh, what they call a light pin, which I don't really know what mode it's in. It's just like a glowy, it's a glowy thing. It just glows no matter what color you pick. I mean, this is cool, guys. So, like, yeah, if you wanted to make, like, lightning... Yeah, I don't know. It's neat though. You guys get the idea. I haven't even gone to the bottom of this list yet. Now I'm just goofing around. Paints, blotches. Yeah. Yeah, well, Photoshop was originally supposed to be a manipulator, image manipulator, um, and it still is, but I think, um, I mean, they've come a long way with the brush engine, obviously. Uh, if you look, especially what Kyle Webster's done with their brushes. Um, <laughs> they do have a Jubilee pen. That is, that's absolutely right. There you go. Jubilee pen. Boca. I might. We might could use that. It seems to be randomly generated, so I'm trying to get lucky with the placement. <laughs> I don't know if I like them or not. Yeah, it makes it better than just a blank background. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So thank you guys for watching as always.
and uh, we'll do this again sometime soon, maybe. So have a good one.